Hello everybody. In this video, we are going to create our database in our Coolify server. And that's the database that we will be used in order to connect our, our Node.js application to start saving information to the database. It will be really, really cool. Um, I will show you how to do it through Coolify and how to put a, a database client also in Coolify. So this is, should be a short video. So one of the first things that we actually need to do, and we need to verify, that is that you are able to go to Coolify itself. We are going to go to our dashboard, create a new resource. I will select database, and that will allow us to select one specific database that we want to use. We can select any type of database, whatever we need. And I will go a little more traditional with uh, a SQL database. And we can actually go through MySQL, MariaDB, or Postgres. I will use with PostgreSQL. In this particular case, I recommend everybody to do it. I will show you how to do through that, but this is just to showcase that we can have any type of database there. So we select it. It gives us the type of version that we need. Let's put the latest one. And it gives us like a, a name. Let's put it here. PostgreSQL database. We keep everything as it is. We have it creates the, the user, the default database. We, we need to have a specific name. We can change it here. I recommend it keep it as it is. Um, it gives us the username, the path, the root password, or the Postgres actually password, and then a user and a, and a password for that particular user. Those are the ones. Something really cool, you also create the connection string. And we're able to make the database available to the world. Normally, this database will be only available to the server, but if we need to connect from outside, we can actually open it. And I will showcase that in order not to create any other database for ourselves. So we just select Postgres SQL database, I just save it. And we'll wait for the configuration to be safe. Cool. It will, it will not allow you to set it public until you start the database. So let's start it. Let's give it, and there you go. It, it was a little bit fast with myself because I already started before, but it would take a little bit longer because it's going to download the Docker image for the database reside. But other than that, that's it. We just enable the public port. And by default, it gives you the port 9000. Let's keep it as it is. This is not the traditional um, Postgres um, port, but this will be the port that will be available to the outside. And we can keep it as it is for now because I will show you, well, not in this video, in the next video, how to connect your local development environment to this particular port itself. So now that we have this open, there's a couple of things that we need to handle first. One of those is we actually need to go to our server. So let me log into my server. And before we proceed, I always recommend I don't I don't have it right now because I already did it, but I rec always recommend to sudo apt update. Put the password there. And just to download the latest updates that, that the server should have. And then, of course, need to do this sudo apt upgrade. This is just to bring everything in. Now, in my particular case, it's asking me for a system restart. Um, you, you can proceed doing a reboot. And actually, it should be a sudo reboot. And it's doing the restart. So I will stop the video now. It will take a couple of minutes to bring the, the, the server up and we will continue. Okay, our server is up. We can try trying to connect. As you can see, I tried several times. It failed. It took over five minutes for me to restart the server. Actually, I, it took longer than I expected, but it is up again. So just to be aware of that, so you'll verify and try to connect to the server again, and you should be able to do it. 
Now, after you're able to connect to the server, Unify took another five minutes to actually come up. Because after the server is up, like all the services that are being created or being bring it up again, just be aware of that particular section. Cool. Now as you can see here that we have our Postgres SQL database is already deployed in the particular server. Really? So we need now an application to use the database itself. But before we move forward, I would like to install this little utility called PG Admin. And pretty much what it, what it is, it's a database administrator. It's a client to handle and, and manage the server itself. It's really simple to use. It's not that complicated and it's really simple to install through Coolify. So let's actually go to download section. Let's select the container version. And then open the doc Docker Hub. We need to copy this line, but in reality, we just need to copy the last, just the name, the name of the container itself is the page PG admin four. So that's what we need to copy. And we click this later release where we have the documentation on how to use this container. So pretty much telling us how to use Docker. If we don't know how to use it. I will not go to details about this. Um, but just going a little bit forward, it's asking us to have a default password and default email, EMB variables, and the rest we can actually skip it. If we don't specify a certificate, it will listen by default on port 80. That's okay because Coolify will be doing the reverse proxy for us, but that's particular, that's actually fine. And that's it. So default port by is, is 80 by default. So we can actually use this. Now, how can we deploy a custom Docker file in Coolify? Well, we already saw that. Let's go our GitHub. Let's create, and we don't need to be that complicated. Let's create just a simple repository. I will call it PG admin. In my case, it can be private, it can be public, doesn't matter because Coolify have access to your GitHub, so that should be fine. In my case, let me select the owner. Let me create the repository. Cool. I will not import any code. I will create the file here with creating a new file. So I will do this file, will be called a Docker file with uppercase D and the rest of the information docker file and we just need to put from and the name of the container the page for where slash pg admin for and that should be it let's commit this file and that's it we have the file there with the information that we need cool now that we have that and our repository is called pg admin we can deploy a new application in Coolify. We will connect to our GitHub repository. We want to select PG admin. Is there on the list? We will select the branch main. We save it. We will select Docker as the way to deploy. Let's call this pg admin keep the rest as it is let's create the fully qualified uh, domain name https and actually have it right here pg admin dot your server name so i just put a pg admin you can do a database administration database client whatever you want to call it i call it just pg admin and my server name itself I will not generate the www. I just want to generate this particular one. And build and deploy. The port is not 3000, it's 80. Without that. Now that we have that, we keep the rest as it is. We save it. Oh, yeah, we need to verify our DNS before. I'm sorry for that. 
So I had the DNS, I deleted in order to show you how to create it. Let's get back to our server, our DigitalOcean. Let's go to your domain and we need, and we can actually add PG admin pointing to your server itself. But what I will be doing here, just because I'm a little bit lazy to be sincere, you will put a little star pointing to the server. We'll change this to server just to be really fast. Probably need to be, need to be changed later, but we can actually do that. And I'm so sorry. Let's not do a a record. Let's actually let me delete this. Let's do a C name. Host will be everybody. Pointing to add. And there we over here. There you go. The star is an alias for rodoroman.com. That's my server DNS. And when I put the start, I'm pretty much telling it's like catching all. Like anything, whatever dot rodoroman.com will point to this particular URL. Is what I'm saying it here. And that's just a shortcut in order not to be creating that DNS entry over and over. So we need to wait that to, to populate a little bit. So probably you need to wait some minutes. Let me get back here. Let me see if it actually work. Oh, it's already propagated in my case. Cool. So it's already saved. I will not deploy yet because we need to create our EMB variables in order to make it work. So let's go to the secrets. Default email. Just put your email there. Put it available in full time. Let me just see that I put the correct one. Yes, my personal email. Add it. And let's add the default email. Now let's do the default password. We, we're not going to do the password file. We're going to do the password one. Let's create a password there. Let's make it available. Add it. That's it. This should be enough. Let's deploy. And let's wait to finish the deployment. Let's see how it goes. Perfect. Again, it went a little bit fast in me because I already had the image downloaded. So you're just building it with the information that I just uh, provided. We can actually go and open it. We can see the bad gateway. That means that it's been, oh, the deployment is started. Deployment is not there yet. Let's wait for a minute or two. Proxy will be updated shortly. Perfect. So it looks like it's just got deployed. Let me try to open my website again. And it's taking longer. Let's just give it another more minutes in order to make it work. So let's just wait. Okay, after a couple of minutes, we can see that PG admin just went in. In order to make it work, we just need to log in with the information that we created on the EMB file. So let me put my email here. Let me put the password I created. And let me log in. Oh, let me see. <laughs> Probably I have misspelling the password. Let me try again. This one, and um... oh, yeah, what are the passwords that I put it there? Let me verify that, and I will get back in a minute. Okay, I made it work. So what I did is that I had a typo in my password. I changed my password, I set it again, and restart the application. And when I restart the application, of course, took a couple of minutes to do it. You can verify in the, in the logs for the application. Whenever you see that it's actually finished, it takes a couple of minutes. I was able to go in, and now I can select, I can type my password there. And able to go to my PG admin. 
Cool. Now that I'm here, I need to connect it to the local PostgreSQL. And that information on the server is, is not there yet. We can actually get that. We will go to the dashboard, the database itself. We can see the host name, and this is a local host name that is only available here in the, in the server itself. And we have the username and the password. So let's go add the new server itself. Let's call it local qualify. You can put it whatever name you need, you want. Connection, host name. I will copy this, the host over here. Because I'm connecting locally, I will use the default password as 5432. The database name. The maintenance database. Let's actually, yeah, let's keep that one, the password. Let's take the user name in the user side. Let's put it over here. Let's take the password. You can keep the password there if you want, save it or not. It will depend what you need. And but it will do extra because I don't want to use the maintenance database. I will use the default database to connect. I will save it. Now we are connected to our local Qualify. This is pretty, pretty cool. Now we can do create. And we can actually do on the database size. Have this one over here. We can do what we can do here. Query tool. We can do a simple table. Let's verify that it's actually working. So let's do a simple create table. Let me just remove this section over here. There you go. Let's call this test test table testing table. Let's call it like that. And let's do we have an ID that will be serial do primary key and we can have another one that's called um let's put it over here and let's I don't know text will be a simple bar chart let's make it really big 255 characters and let's do unique I don't know whatever you want to put it there not no so that means that we need to insert something there. So we execute. Uh, primary. Oh, it's without the underscore. Primary key. I didn't like it. Let me see what is happening here. Okay, there you go. We created successful. We can open our database, the weird name. We can go to schemas. We can open the public one. And right there we have the tables. And we have our testing table. And we can actually see the columns. We have ID and text in there. We can actually do a simple describe, I believe. Describe testing. Table. Describe, of course. Mm. <laughs> yeah, my SQL is not up to speed right now. Mm. Actually, I'm trying to execute something that is for Oracle. So post reduce something like this. Select column name from information schema columns where table name equal. And we can put a single quote and let's do table. This table, testing table. Testing table. 
because we have five to execute. I didn't like it. Hmm. So I like it, I like it. Or... Let's select everything. Hmm, interesting. Yeah, so we can actually do something like select everything from testing table. We can see that we have the ID and the text column. Nothing is there. Let's do a simple insert into testing table values. Let's do hello there. And I think the ID should be automatically. Let's execute. Let's remove this one. Let's execute this other one. Um, probably need to put here. Yes, with the column, and the column is called text. I'm not sure she should be like this or like this. Testing table, testing table, column. Yeah, it should be like this. Yeah, I have SQL is not my strong suit here. Okay, silly me. I need to specify the ID. So I just put ID1. Hello there. Let's create another one. ID2. Hello. Again. Okay. Perfect. We can do a simple select everything from testing. Table and I need to fix my from and my select. And we have hello there and hello again. That's pretty much seeing that the database is working and it's doing what it's supposed to. So let's just drop it just to clean it. You can keep it there. Drop table testing table. And now testing table is not there anymore. If we refresh our data, we can see that that one is not there. Cool. So I really hope that you like it. In this video, we just put our database up and we created the PG admin in order to connect. Actually, I think that I'm missing something. Yes, we make the database available to port 9000, but that means that we need to actually open that port in two different places. One place will be in the server. If we do a simple, let me log in again. If we do a simple sudo ufw status. We can see the different rules that apply to the server. And we can do a simple sudo ufw allow 9000. That's the port that we are going to exporting the database to the world. And we can actually put a comment. And let's do qualify the database, or whatever, Postgres or whatever. Cool. And we do the status again. We can see the port 9000 is available to qualify database. And one last thing in our digitalocean, we need to go to the, if we set up the firewall here, we need to work on that. So we need to go to networking, firewalls. I have my firewall for the qualify. 
and right now we just have SSH HTTP HTTPS. I will create custom one, and it will be port nine thousand. And save it. That's it. We just open it the port nine thousand to be able to connect to the server. And in the next video, we're going to be creating the database connection in our Node.js app and we'll be interacting with that using Prisma. So I really hope that you like it. Any question any doubt, don't hesitate to reach me. Happy coding everybody.